Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Pete Wedderburn and I've been a vet for over 30 years. I own my own practice, so I'm a clinical vet, but I'm also a media vet and I write newspaper columns and I talk on the radio and television. So I get a lot of queries from people who want to own cats but can't because they or a member of their household is allergic to cats. So when I talk to these people, I gather that they have a number of false beliefs, false myths that they believe. Hi, I'm Libby Sheridan and I'm the Veterinary Technical Manager at Purina. I'm here with Pete to bust some common myths around cat allergens. The first one, myth one, is that cat hair is the allergen that causes human sensitivity. And that's not true, that's false. In actual fact, the problem is an allergen called FELD1 that's produced in cat saliva. And it's a very sticky protein. And what happens is, it's a bit like glitter, if you can imagine. What happens is when a cat grooms themselves, licking themselves all over, what they do is they, sh they transfer that protein from their mouth in the saliva all over their body, um, onto the fur and onto the skin. And then as the cat goes around the house, um, they shed skin, uh, skin cells and some fur. Um, and the, the, the FELD1 protein is so sticky that it will transfer um, all around the house wherever the cat goes. So it will stick to furnishings and walls and the carpet and it will remain there for a year or more. Um, that is the source of the allergy that, that people get so affected by. The second myth that I want to address, myth number two, is that hypoallergenic cats don't produce allergens. This is false. Um, and it, it causes lots of problems because people think they're going to buy a pet that they won't be allergic to. to. But that's just not, not the case at all. Um, different cats produce different levels of allergens, different levels of FELD1. Naturally, they produce different levels, but those levels aren't correlated to breed, to gender, to length of fur, um, to age or to, to body weight. So there's a natural variation between cats, but it's not something that's predictable in a way that people can select. So what that means is that just as um, different people have different levels of allergies to, to cats, different cats naturally produce different levels of allergens. So um, when somebody is trying to manage a cat allergy, um, they have to look at a range of different ways of, of reducing the exposure of themselves to the FLD1 allergen. And that does not include choosing a particular type of cat, but it does include a number of other ways that would include, as we'll come to, the type of food that's fed. Myth number three, it's impossible to neutralize cat allergens before they enter the environment. This is false. After a decade of research, Purina scientists have discovered that a specific protein sourced from eggs can safely neutralize FELD1 in the cat's mouth. By reducing active FELD1 in the cat's saliva, it reduces the allergen that's transferred onto the cat's hair and dander as it grooms, ultimately reducing the allergen in the environment. Myth four, neutralizing FELD1 with egg protein must impact the cat's physiology. This is false. The beauty of ProPlan Live Clear is that it reduces cat allergens on the cat's hair and dander without impacting the physiology of the cat. The neutralizing action takes place in the cat's mouth as it eats its food. So the cat continues to produce FELD1 and therefore continuous and daily feeding of Live Clear is required to neutralize that FELD1. Because scientists don't know exactly why cats produce FELD1, the goal was to neutralize it rather than inhibit its production. Once swallowed, the key ingredient is digested just like any other protein, so it's totally safe for the cat. Myth number five, every sufferer is impacted in the same way. This is false. Humans have an individual allergic threshold, which is the point that they develop allergic symptoms. They reach their allergic threshold when a combination of allergens build up and by reducing the FELD1 allergen in the environment, the total allergen load can be reduced. And if the total allergen load then falls below that individual's allergic threshold, then they're less likely to develop allergic symptoms. 
Myth number six, if I get rid of the cat, I will immediately stop suffering. This is false. Bell D1 gets everywhere. It sticks to walls, furnishings, surfaces. It's a bit like glitter and we know how long glitter hangs around for. And so does Fel D1. It can stay in houses where cats have been for over a year. Some people would say, oh, they're just cats, but, but they're not. They're part of my family. So I was probably doing 10 to 15 different things a day just to be able to live with the cats and have them near me. We started shutting the doors some nights, dusting, sweeping, mopping, vacuuming, vacuuming the furniture, vacuuming the bed, laying towels on my pillows, hiding my pillows so that there was no hair on them, constantly cleaning my clothes. You can't hug, you can't hold. And that's what I wanted to give my cats. This food has absolutely been life-changing. The moment that I realized that the cat food was working, I was actually laying in bed, and I realized that the cats were right next to me. I was actually cuddling with my cats, and I just about cried. I have so much more time. I'm not constantly vacuuming. I'm not constantly cleaning. There's no way I will ever go back to any other food. It's, it's not going to happen. <laughs> For the first time ever, I am living with my cats. <laughs>